Hello? Hello, is this Paul? It is. Hey, Paul, this is Dustin Wilmes from KMSU Radio. How you doing? All right, how are you? I am excellent. Is this still a good time to ask you a few questions? You bet. Awesome. Well, first, I want to say it's an honor to have you on the show, and I appreciate you taking the time out. Oh, well, thanks. Well, first, I want to get uh, your sense of, you know, what made you want to get into the entertainment business and become an actor? Why did you want to get started? Oh, geez. Well, um, it had a lot to do with um, seeing Oliver on Broadway and uh, seeing those kids on stage being in a show just made me nuts. I wanted to do that so badly. And uh, also seeing Victor Borga, the the comedian, uh, the Danish comedian who was a big hit in the States, that also really got me going. And doing school plays, and uh, I'm using the school play when I was in kindergarten. So the combination of all those, um, and I'm just a natural hand bone, so that probably had something to do with it too. So then where does the uh, the puppetry come in? Was that always something you were interested in, too? I did have an interest in puppetry as a kid. Um, but the way it came about was I was in residence at uh, Goddard College in Plainfield, Vermont, uh, kind of a radical hippie, um, super progressive, super freestyle college and the bread and puppet theater was in residence there and i took some workshops with the theater and then i ended up joining the theater and um you know and that was it for me doing puppet shows i get to play all the parts and design the puppets and you know write the show and perform it and you know travel it around and try to sell it and and so it's perfect for a megalomaniacal you know egotist lunatic like me yeah, it does kind of seem like uh, puppetry maybe nowadays is a dying art, but uh, do you see it uh, maybe coming back, or is CGI and that sort of uh, cheaper style of things kind of uh, making it go away? Oh, I don't think, I think it's the opposite, really. Puppetry isn't isn't dying out. It's having this huge revival. Um, you know, if you look in, in Minneapolis, St. Paul area, you've got Heart of the Beast and, and all these other puppet companies and they have puppet slams, and you know there's a big puppet community in in that part of the world as there is in a lot of uh, cities in the country. So puppetry has been um, having a revival that's just getting stronger and stronger, be- in part because of the programs at the O'Neill Theater Center and uh, at Cal Arts and and UConn and stores that you know teach puppetry. So. Now it's really, it's like super on the upswing. And as far as the whole um, computer thing is concerned, people are used to it and they've seen it. And when they see a puppet show, it's, you know, it's like a novelty now because we're so used to seeing all that, the computer generated, um, you know, cartoon movies or whatever, animation, which coming out of Hollywood, this stuff is pretty pretty standard and you know kind of they all look the same the characters all look the same so i think puppetry is pretty novel and uh and that puppetry will live forever that's for sure well then i gotta ask you um considering your uh, your upbringing and you know going into the uh, world of puppetry and uh, wanting to be an, uh, an actor you know how did you wind up then uh, being a scientist on beekman's world that doesn't seem like the natural progression of things well uh they had looked for someone out here in Los Angeles and Hollywood to play the part and they couldn't find anybody in the casting process who they thought was right for the part. <laughs> Believe it or not, with like a million actors out here. Uh, so they started looking outside Hollywood and the guy who had been hired for the director, Jay Dubin, he knew me from New York because um, the guy I went to summer camp with um hooked us up and we tried to pitch a project to um, HBO back in the day and it didn't happen. So it occurred to him when they were casting, Hey, this guy could be interesting. And uh, I had a slideshow I did about food and food processing where I wore a lab coat and played a food technologist. And I sent them that tape. And since it was, I did kind of look like a scientist and the spiel was kind of a science thing. uh, You know, they bit and then they flew me out and, uh, the audition, it was going so-so, but then I knocked over a beaker of water. You know, they had set up a little laboratory deal, and I knocked over a beaker of water. And being a live performer, you know, I just ad-libbed with it, splashed it around, and just, you know, 
did extemporaneous comedy, and uh, boom, I got the job. So then, uh, I guess the science part of it, it sounds like maybe you just kind of picked it up as the show went along then? I learned a lot from the show. Um, I've always been interested in science, particularly the natural sciences. Um, and so, you know, that's always been a passion and interest of, of mine, spending a lot of time in the country and in the woods and looking around trying to figure out what's going on. I'm also really interested in certain parts of science, like neuroscience. I have a, a live... Uh, performance that I do called Beekman on the Brain, everything you ever want to know about the brain, but we're thinking too much to ask. And it's about neuroscience, and, the, and uh, I use puppets in that show, you know, I perform as Beekman, and I use uh, slides and some video, and all of that, you know, I did because I'm passionately interested, I'm fascinated by the science of the brain. So that's the areas that I gravitate to uh, towards, and that I, you know, I read about and um, and am interested in making work about. Yeah, that is awesome, and and you know, Beekman's World, such a unique program. You know, and you had the string of assistants, and you know, Lester the Rat, and all the great sound effects. I think were really great too. Do you think we could ever see, or will we ever see another show like that in children's television, or is that kind of gone by the wayside too? No, it's way over. It's not going to happen again. Um, why? Because our show costs like two hundred grand or two hundred fifty thousand bucks to make each episode, and nobody, nowhere, no how is ever going to spend that coming kind of dough on a kid show again. Um, kid shows today are designed not for children or education in mind, but um, with the mothers in mind who watch the shows. So the shows are oriented towards the moms, uh, the, you know, whatever science or educational shows, quote unquote, are on television, are oriented towards the moms. The commercials are for the moms. Um, so you have a kind of show like a travel log or a nature show. and The host will be some handsome young dude to appeal to the mom. So that's the way the business works now. Um, so, no, there will ne- I, I doubt very much there will ever be a show uh, with the production values, you know, live action show like um, what we did or uh, Bill Nye or Pee Wee's Playhouse or all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, that is too bad that it's turned out that way. Is that why uh, Beekman's World ended? Was it due to uh, the cost restraints? Or No, the, the reason it ended was we did 91 episodes, which was enough for the studio to uh, put the thing into second run syndication. And because it's it's evergreen, you know, it never goes out of, um, it never, you know, it's not like, it's not a timely thing. It's timeless, so they can keep showing it. Uh, and also kids, their attitude was kids will grow up and not watch it anymore. So they didn't need as many episodes to go into second run as you would with an adult sitcom or whatever, because there's so much turnover of the audience. Well, it's too bad that uh, that's how it worked out. Do you think there'd be a DVD set, though? I mean, I know a lot of people are, are still clamoring for that show and enjoy it, especially in uh, in Latin America. It seems like it's huge down there as well. Yeah, it's crazy popular in uh, in Mexico, in Argentina, Colombia, in Brazil, um, and, and elsewhere, Ecuador. Um, very, very popular, and I've tried to get to the bottom of why. I go down there, and it's crazy. I need, like, police escorts, and the fans are just completely rabid. People get super excited. Uh, I had a woman grab me by the leg when I was getting hustled out of some gig. She was on the ground, like, grabbing my leg. The mayor of Mexico City came to my show. I mean, it's just completely insane. And I've been trying to get to the bottom, bottom of it, and people will say, oh, it's because you make science interesting. Well, yes, that's definitely part of it. And I hear from a lot of people, I'm a scientist today because of you, or a doctor, or or uh, a teacher. And that's great, too. But what really explains the passion, I think, is when when the kids watch the show, the, the performer, the character Beekman, made direct address to the camera. The character talked to the kids through the camera, and he was very, very close to the camera. So it was very intimate. And, you know, and it was funny and compelling uh, visually and had interesting ways of disseminating this stuff. But I think that eye contact and that closeness and the warmth of it, 
that's what made people so fanatical about it down there. And and also, there's something about the sensibility of the show that m- kind of meets the Latin sensibility. I, I can't really explain it because I don't understand it. And the, the lastly, uh, there was nothing on the air down there that was anything like it. Well, yeah, definitely uh, still a show that uh, I think kids nowadays could relate to if they could find some way to uh, bring it back. And and you mentioned uh, the Beekman character is still going strong. You're touring with him, and uh, I know you're teaching a lot of classes and, and doing a lot of workshops, too. Yeah, I like doing, I like doing the workshops and classes. I, I particularly, I, I've just added doing PowerPoint uh, for teachers, and that's really fun because I love I love PowerPoint. I actually use Keynote, the Mac version, um, and I know everybody in the world hates the presentation software because of you know the business, the horrible PowerPoints that everyone's seen in the business world. But it's it's really fun for me. It's like storytelling with pictures. So I I, I like teaching uh, or showing teachers some different ways of using PowerPoint in the classroom. And I teach puppet workshops, uh, found object puppet workshops, um, um, showing fo- folks how you can use everyday objects and animate them as puppets, and and a few other workshops. So yeah, it's it's fun. I love doing it. So do people just um, head to your website maybe if they want to book you for for a workshop or take some of your classes? Uh, yeah, the the website is uh, BeekmanLive um, dot com, and. Uh, there's some information on there. I've not been too good about keeping it all up to date, but uh, I can be reached at info at Beekman.com. So, yeah, I'm, I love working. I love touring and traveling. I, you know, I didn't answer your, uh, your question about why it's not on the air. Um, you have to understand that the studios are in the business of, uh, of like Seinfeld reruns and that sort of thing. And, you know, Seinfeld is like a billion-dollar business for them. Um, Beekman was a very, very small business for them. It didn't generate that much income from them. It's, as far as they're concerned, it's not worth the hassle. There's no real altruism involved in the picture, unfortunately. Um, but I will say that they have approved, uh, the studios approved me doing a series of uh, public service amount- announcements through the embassy, the American embassy in, um, in Mexico City. So this has been a great thing that they're allowing us to use the character and uh, go on television and show these PSAs about science, technology, engineering, and math initiatives for uh, women and girls to try to get women, girls and women more interested in science and to take on science careers. So that's a, a great thing that the studio has done and that uh, I think they should be very proud of. Yeah, that's awesome to, to hear that the character is still going on and I got to assume when you uh, found out about Beekman, you know, first, and you were just the guy that kind of fit the look, you probably didn't envision you would still be uh, doing it all these years later. Yeah, I didn't really think about it. I mean, um, you know, being a performer on television that's shot on a stage, you don't really have that much connection with the audience. Um, You know, whereas when you do a live show, they're right in front of you and they're responding or not. So it's basically like going to work and doing your thing in the factory and going home. Then once in a while, being early up early enough uh, in the morning on Saturday to turn on the tube and watch the show. And, you know, it's like, oh, that's cool. Um, but it's basically like having a job and going to the factory, except, you know, I got paid pretty well. So I wasn't thinking about the future. I had no idea that it would actually affect people in a way that they would take on careers as scientists. I figured, okay, it's a way of bolstering science education for kids at school. You know, a, a collaborator with libraries and teachers and parents to get kids involved in science. But I never thought that, um, you know, that hundreds of thousands or millions of people would be inspired and would love the thing and would lead a lot of people to being neuroscientists and doctors and science teachers and biologists and physicists. And I mean, I had no idea. So it's been, it's really been amazing. And I'm very grateful uh, for the privilege of having been a part of all of it. Yeah, that is awesome for sure. And I got to ask you, uh, I've always heard this argument, I guess, on the playground as we were kids, but uh, you mentioned him earlier, Bill Nye. And uh, there was always that debate, but you know, Beekman versus Bill Nye. What do you think of that? Was there any heat? I mean, scientist heat between you guys? Or uh, I, 
you know, I know Bill had criticized me a, a couple of times in the press, um, saying that I wasn't uh, a scientist like he is, and um, I, my attitude has always been, um, uh, well, I, you know, I, I don't really care to respond to that because there's not, you know, a lot of point or or benefit to actually, you know, responding to that. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it makes me any less uh, possible or less effective to communicate science. Um, and communicate these principles. Uh, I think, you know, his show was great. Our show was great. Anything that is compelling on TV about science is great. And th- that's really sincerely how I feel. You know, the more the merrier. And, um, yeah, that's it. I mean, the whole rivalry thing is amusing uh, and, and funny. But, I, you know, I just don't look at the world like that. It's, it's not interesting to me. It's more interesting to see what effect we can have as individual artists and what we can do, um, you know, to change things and make things uh, better for folks, particularly in countries that are uh, emerging, you know, uh, third world countries. That's very exciting. So the whole competitive thing, I just, you know, I don't get it. Sure. Well, again, Paul, I want to thank you for being on. And uh, I want to ask you if there's anything else you want to mention coming up. I know you you mentioned the touring and the workshops and some of the uh, public service announcements. Are there any other projects on the way? Well, I'm I'm going to be down in Mexico in, in February doing a little tour of uh, high schools, and I'm going to be playing my puppet show. I'm doing this puppet show called White Like Me, a hunky-dory puppet show, um, which is about the trials and tribulations of being a Caucasian male. Um, that was ironic. But I'm, I'm going to be doing that here in Los Angeles this winter and um, looking at playing in uh in Boston and maybe even Minneapolis. So, uh, you know, I hope to be in a theater near you soon. Yeah, definitely. I hope to, uh, to run into you someday. And, and again, it's been an honor speaking with you. I really appreciate it. Um, likewise. Thanks so much for having me. Dustin. All right. Have a good week. Thanks, man. Bye-bye.